I just had the wildest dream about you. <laughs> Guess what you were doing? I don't have that good a memory. <laughs> Are you reading that retirement notice again? On October 1st, 1977, the date of your mandatory retirement, you will turn over to the city of New York your ID card, locker room key, call box key, riot helmet, and badge. Love and kisses, Mayor B. They can't make you turn in your badge. If I'm not going to be a cop, what would I do with the badge? Hang it on my rocking chair? Believe me, Fish, they're going to miss you a lot more than you miss them. Yeah, I'll tell them that the first thing in the morning. Why don't you try to get some sleep? If I close my eyes and lie down, New York City will come and bury me. <laughs> Are you on the swim team or something? You sure can hold your breath. This time, try it with your eyes open. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. First you pick me up, and then you ask me out. And now you're trying to tell me how to kiss. Hey, I'm the boy. Don't you like me? Sure I like you. It's just... Why don't you push me away and give me a chance to prove it? All right. Oh, stop. Oh, you animal. It's our first date. Oh, yeah, good, good. Hey, listen, it's getting a little late. You're going to get in trouble with your folks. So I'll get in trouble. No getting a girl in trouble in my house. Whichever one of you lives here, go upstairs. The one who doesn't, go home. How you doing, Mr. Fish? Um, this is Peggy. How do you do and goodbye? It was a pleasure. I notice. No pleasure on my couch. Right. I'll walk across the street and I'll be right back. I can't wait. <laughs> Hang on to this time. <laughs> I, I, uh, I didn't expect to find anyone up. Neither did they. <sighs> it's still hot. There's nothing like young love. I don't remember. <laughs> I'm not in the mood for your philosophical conversation. Right. Hi, Charlie. Denise. Uh, Phil seems upset. I mean, more than usual. Denise, why are you following me? I just thought I'd make you some warm milk. They're putting my whole life on the city dump. She wants to give me burned milk. Hey, Charlie. Hey. Heard you had a date with a nurse. Well, uh, how was she? Uh, very dedicated. <laughs> but uh, that looks like a nice girl. She's not. Take it off before it gets that skin on top. I know. It's just the way you like it, Fish. Wonderful. Do you remember Herman Poston? No. Neither does anyone else. 
He's only been retired six months, and they already took his name off his locker. It's not his locker anymore. Barney promised me he'd keep mine on. Not on the desk, but on the locker. That's nice. Like Mickey Mantle. <laughs> on the desk, it, it would be confusing because someone else will be sitting in my chair at my desk. If it turns out they get another detective whose name is Fish, well, then they can keep my name played on. <laughs> but Barney says he checked the applicants, and uh, the closest one is Sheldon Salmon. <laughs> he's not so sure he wants to go by the generic name. If you can't get in the toilet. Hey, next time you want to do the stuff here, got a beauty parlor, huh? Come on, Victor, you can understand, can't you? Hey! Tough luck, Kreutzer. Please, Mr. Fish, get that downstairs bathroom fixed. Or else the Department of Health will come in here and close us up. You wouldn't have this cushy job of taking care of us. Just wanted to get my comb. Yeah. Free. <laughs> hey, Peg. Oh, Mike. My father says he's gonna kill you. What? Did he mention me by name? Yeah, he said... When I get a hold of that punk, I'll kill him. Ah, oh, punk. That could mean anybody. Oh, isn't it exciting? Kiss me. Hey, take it easy, will you? Are you sure he was talking about me? Uh-huh. Then what do I got to lose? <laughs> Don't do that near my coat. We were just leaving anyway. Oh, if a tall man with a red face and his veins all sticking out comes looking for Mike, tell him, tell him we went to school. <laughs> guess what I made for breakfast. I always have to guess what you made. <laughs> But I'm not stopping for breakfast. I, I have a full day. It's your day off. I thought we'd spend it together. I'm sorry, Bernice, but I have a very important appointment. What kind of appointment? A 3.30 appointment. For what? Or a 3.30 conversation. With whom? With the head of security at the mercantile building. What? A man needs a place to go, to do things. What sort of things? You know, Bernice, too many questions can kill a person. 
Yes, please. I'm signing up for the Walson Security Patrol. Security Patrol? I talked to Mulcahy and Nelson from Manhattan South. You remember them? No. Yeah, you do. My, Mulcahy had a, had a mustache and uh, Nelson had a dog. <laughs> Two great cops. When they retired, they became Walson security guards. I didn't think you wanted a job night watching. I'm not going to be night watching. I'm going to be guarding the Mercantile Trade Center, a $60 million building, Bernice. This is not a job for a night watchman. This is a job for an experienced law enforcement officer. $60 million building, <laughs> you don't fool around. <laughs> Don't you think you're entitled to a rest before you, before you go back to work? If I take a rest, first thing you know, you're resting in peace. <laughs> I made up my mind, Bernice. Oh, it's going to be great being with the, with the old boys again, McKay, Nelson, and me. Oh, I'm so excited. What about the promise that we made to the city that when you retired, We'd both be here full time. What about the promise they made me they'd pick up the garbage every morning? <laughs> so much for promises. It's a very interesting color, Bernice. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> It's probably not one of my better efforts. <laughs> I've been thinking all day about Fish taking that security guard job. Bernice, he's been threatening to get a job and give up these kids since the day he got here. If he'd only give them a chance. It took him five years to get used to our own children. <laughs> well, for some people, intimacy is very threatening. Took him a little while to get used to that, too. <laughs> Bernice, look, trust me. I'm a psychologist in training. I can read fish like a book. He's gonna come home tonight just like every other night and complain about dinner. Oh, I hope you're right, Charlie. <laughs> hello, hello. He did it. Maybe it's just the cleaning. Mm, something smells delicious. Are you okay, Phil? I'm perfect. Surely you must have noticed. Did you, uh, did you pick up some cleaning fish? No, as a matter of fact, this is my guard's uniform. My, uh, my coat, my pants, my shirt, my hat, a regular fun suit. <laughs> uh, I wish I could stay for dinner, but I've been invited to a shakedown tour with Mulcahy and Nelson. Tonight? Yeah, you know, I sort of to see what it's like. Sort of, uh, join the fun. Oh. <laughs> Uh, but so, uh, I'll be needing a lunch. We're going to dine on the mezzanine at two. Sounds like a great party. Yeah. A fish? You're going to be gone all night. I'll be all alone again. Sure. Just like old times. <laughs> Hey, Mr. Fish. Yeah. We understand you're gonna get a new job. That's right. What's the matter? You don't like your job of taking care of us? I do, and I don't. It's hard to explain when a, when a man spends his whole lifetime, such as it is, or was, doing a particular, you know, whatever, and uh, which, is, which was very fulfilling, uh, when he finds that in that uh, place there is something that well, that it's something else. He has to say to himself, uh, uh, you wouldn't understand. You know something? If Mr. Fish's job works out steady, we're all gonna get zapped back to Children's Center. And I thought we were gonna be just like the Waltons. <laughs> What happened? <laughs> yeah, 
just not blind. <laughs> My father sent me to my room, you know? So I turned on the radio, and I climbed over the porch and ran over here. Oh, wait till he finds out. It's so romantic. <laughs> so this is what you want for Phil Fish. I wanted bologna, but Victor ate it. <laughs> Bernice, you can't let him do this to himself and, and to these children. I think I'll put in a little note with the sandwich. Sure, it's been a rough time, but, but we're only just starting to know each other. I'll write it on a paper towel, <laughs> and then he can use it to catch the crumbs. <laughs> Where's Peggy? Where is she? Uh, good evening. I know she's here somewhere with that punk. Uh, sir, maybe I can... Uh, ah. Sir, if you just help me, maybe I can... Uh... Where's your brother? Uh, Cleveland. What? <laughs> oh, I think you're looking for Mike. Mike! Mike! Uh -huh. If that's the punk that's been mauling my kid. About five, six black curly hair, a lot of teeth. Uh, that's the punk. Peggy! <laughs> Peggy! Have you seen Peggy? Who are you? I'm her father. Oh. I thought you'd have more hair on your hands. <laughs> What's going on out here? Hey, are you the mother here? I'm Mrs. Fish. Your name is? Ed Dunnigan. I'm uh, Peggy's father. Oh, it's nice to meet you. Uh, my husband and I are in charge here. Have you met my husband? Apparently not. <laughs> Mike is, uh, your son, too? Oh, no, no. We just live here. We all live here. What is this, some kind of hippie commune? No, it's a group home. Oh, you're groupies. <laughs> no, see, they're all wards of the court. Criminals? I am. Criminals? <laughs> We got a house full of criminals here. I want my daughter. I demand to know where my daughter Mr. is. Mr. Dunnigan, I really think you're jumping to... Where is she? She's upstairs. <laughs> upstairs? He didn't waste much time taking her upstairs, did he? Upstairs, where there's a man coming down with a gun. Hey, easy with the gun. No guns. I just want to get my daughter, that's all. I'm unarmed. Look, look. Look at the pants. Not a bulge. Not even any keys. What are you, nuts? Uh, Phil, this is Peggy's father. Who? Who are you? That's my husband, Mr. Fish. With a gun? He's a cop! Oh, yeah? Can I take my hands down? Unless you prefer looking silly. <laughs> Shut up! Daddy? Peggy! Yeah. Baby! <laughs> you! Criminal! You. Well, where till I get my hands on you? Mr. Dunnigan, you're wrong about Mike. He's a criminal. <laughs> They're all criminals. Don't tell you. You're all criminals, right? Speak up, right? I am. See? Mr. Dunnigan, these children are not criminals. They're just in need of a good home and, and some love and affection. 
Oh, they're not going to get it all from my daughter. Look at him. Standing there, looking at her, touching her. I know what's on his mind. She spoke just like her mother. That's not. Daddy, don't embarrass me. It's for your own good, princess. Why don't you ask her highness why she comes over here to see Mike all the time? They forced you, right? You didn't. I want to bring him home, Daddy, but you never let me. Because he's a criminal. Shut up already. <laughs> These children are in our care. And if they had gotten any before, maybe they wouldn't be here now. Oh? Well, the people who live in this neighborhood are going to be very interested to find out what's living here now. Well, you can tell them the nicest people in the whole world. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. you tell them. Right. You better keep him away from my daughter. You worry about your daughter, and we'll worry about Mike. If there's any trouble, I'll have your badge. Everyone wants my badge. Isn't it exciting? Never mind. I wish I lived here, too. I'll go, 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 go! You remember what I told you. Get out of here, Donegan. Yeah! Shut up! This may be my idea of a joke. <laughs> hey, Charlie. What do you call it when two people are wishing the same thing? Lust. <laughs> yeah. That's it. What's for dinner? Dinner? I just packed you a nice lunch, Fish. You won't even be able to finish it. Forget it, I'm not going. Phil, what happened? Nothing happened. Let Mulcahy and Nelson walk around some dark old building if they want to. I don't need the aggravation. I'm glad you're staying. Besides, it would be too boring there all night. I was just thinking the same thing. Lust. <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> hey, Mr. Fish. I think this note is for you. <laughs> Put away the milk. <laughs> 